man happy to be back with another episode of Burke's thoughts slimmer trimmer uh mentally i feel like i'm healthier um i'd take a little hiatus take a little break from the grind of of tla uh, start up a uh baseball academy um uh, if you guys didn't know i did play baseball all my life uh beforehand so started to give some lessons now uh for for you know younger kids and you know kids that are in college and looking to go to the pros as well so we'll see how that goes um but yeah man this is it's like therapy for me so i'm, I'm happy to be back here um first and foremost what am i sipping on while i talk about this i'm gonna be sipping on joel richard extra and yeho um, it is a relatively unknown brand but honestly it is probably one of the best tequilas I've had. I would say it's in my top 25 for sure. This tequila is in my top 25, 100% for sure. Hard to find. So, I mean, it's not that expensive either. It's like $90 for a three-year extra in Yeho. So, well, minimum three-year extra in Yeho. Um, barrel proof, 82 proof. So, I mean, it's a high proof, slightly high proof. Um, tequila so you know it's it's real damn good so I'm gonna be sipping on that while I'm doing this and I'm also gonna be, I'm gonna be enjoying a uh, Goose Island IPA the reason why I have this this is a funny story in itself before I get into the real story what we're here for um, <laughs> we're at my son's birthday party and it was at this like indoor like park indoor like you know playground so to say and uh you know me and some of the other dads that came um we're like hey I'm like hey you want a beer so yeah we get a beer so i buy three beers and i didn't know it was only four dollars less than a bucket of beers so my other buddy goes and gets a bucket of beers he tells me how much it is i'm like fuck it's only four dollars less than what i paid well four dollars more than what i paid so I need to give I need to see if I can pay four dollars more to get two extra beers. Go up to the manager, I'm like, yo, can I do this? Manager comes back with a whole bucket of beers. Boom. You don't owe me anything. So he gave me five free beers. So, needless to say, I'm not gonna sit there long enough to crush five beers. It was four of us. And we had at this point I think we had eight extra beers left. So I'm not gonna crush eight beers. They're not gonna crush eight beers. So I hide these beers as we're re getting ready to go. I hide these beers under my son's birthday presents and I carry them out in a box and put them in my back seat. And here we go. I have beer still in my fridge. So cheers to, to that manager. Uh, I can't say where it was cause I don't want to get him in trouble, but cheers to him. But anyway, the first episode back of Burke's thoughts, um, it's about Lollapalooza day one. So this is Thursday. Lollapalooza is absolutely crazy. Uh, if you've never been there before, I highly recommend you go there. If you are, if you're under the age of 25, well, if you're 25 or younger, it's not gonna shock you, but I'm gonna tell you, if you're 26 or like you're a parent and you walk into Lollapalooza, I just recommend that you get a VIP pass and just keep your head looking up because what you like the clothing that you see there, it will fucking shock you. And if you're a dad like I am, you start to put on your dad hat and you're like looking around like, why are all these little kids and nothing like nothing but bikinis and I uh, I can't get into it. it. That was that was a shocker about Lollapalooza. But to get in our day one, my day one at Lollapalooza, I invited my buddy Brad. Uh, you guys have seen him on here uh, for Fireside Chronicles for other things. I always mention him. I did a reel with him with uh, to start out Lollapalooza. So it was the day before his birthday. So I'm like, hey, come on out. Let's go have some parties, right? 
So this guy hits me up saying, we're starting, we're starting to drink. He's like, first off, he said, I want to get there as soon as the gates open. I'm like, all right, cool. That's like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. I can do that. Okay, cool. So then he hits me up and he says, by the way, we're going to be drinking before we get on the train. We're going to be drinking on the train. And I plan on drinking all the way through Lollapalooza, which is something I already planned on doing in the first place. But he was like, this is what we're, this is the plan. So we started at 10 a.m. drinking. I started smoking then too. So smoking and drinking at 10 a.m. in the morning. First day of Lollapalooza, right? What was my first drink of choice? Joel Richard, extra Indiana. Had to start me out with a glass of this to start out my Lollapalooza drinking, right? So we're drinking. I think we had like a a glass of a glass each and a beer while we're here. Um, and then we go onto the train. We each take two beers each onto the train. And we must have just got on the train in time for us still to be able to drink on there because the other people that were meeting there, they got told that they think they took like the train that was like an hour or two later than us. They got told that they could not bring beers on the train. So they had to crush all the beers they had before they even got on the train because, you know, I guess one hour later they put that stipulation on there. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we had something to do with it. I doubt it, but, you know, one can wish that we could change that much. But we weren't acting negative. So we get in there, right? So we go in there. Immediately we're just seeing, like, freaking young kids, like, everywhere and just – like what seemed like nothing. I'm just like, as a dad, I'm like, man, like I wouldn't let my, I couldn't let my kid come here. I, I couldn't, you know? So I, I acclimated to the, to the setting, the scenery, because no matter where you, you looked, no matter where it was, that was just what it was, you know? Um, so I'm already buzzed at this point. Brad is already buzzed at this point and we go get some more beers. Why not? We have a long day. Lollapalooza. Why not keep drinking? So we go and we get a couple more beers. We go to uh, we go to watch another show. We go to watch the first show. First show of uh, Lollapalooza. We went to go watch that. And that performance, I would say, I can't remember who it was, but it was pretty dope. Um, I think that one thing that Lollapalooza does is that they give they give a wide variety of music selections for you um, and, you know, for you to enjoy. It's not like you're going, like, when I say wide variety, it doesn't mean, like, you're going from, like, you know, uh, fo uh, it's not like you're going from folk music to, like, you know, you know, techno, not doing that. Like, you're going to stay within certain levels, but you're still getting a wide variety of artists that are coming within those genres. Like you have a little bit of like, um, I think the stage room had a little bit of rock country to straight up, you know, rap um, and everything in between that. So that was pretty cool. Um, so we got to watch one guy. Um, I can't remember, for the life of me, I can't remember who it was, but it was kind of like a, um, I said it's kind of like a Kid Cudi type of rapper, so to say. Um, pretty good songs, pretty good, you know, music, pretty good vibe for our, have our first beer. You know, we're starting to see how the crowds are coming up. Uh, first little crowd of the day really started to go there. So, you know, and I think that that was when, that was when we first filmed, if you go back to Lollapalooza Thursday, you saw Brad and I filmed a video of him talking, doing the, the shoe challenge. He said, he said, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I have my white shoes out here. Let's see the status of these shoes by the end of Lollapalooza on day one, right? So I take the video, we document this. So we're gonna just remember this at this point, just remember this because it's gonna, it's gonna come back up. 
by the way, man, this is Joel, this is Joel Richard. Yo, honestly, I didn't even know. I didn't realize it was a little bit high proof. I mean, it's it's four. I mean, I'm sorry, it's two. It's two proofs. Uh, it's two percent over. Well, the normal tequila is eighty proof, so it's two percent over or two proof over, whatever you want to call it. The normal tequila, so it gives it a little bit of an extra bite to it, uh, a nice stronger like pepper, so to say. But the sweetness of it, it's like the sweet. Um, more like a sweet caramel, not like an additive type of sweetness, but like the fresh agave type of sweetness that it comes that comes with it. Um, nice fresh agave, good pepper on there. Uh, I like it. I think it's I think it's absolutely delicious. Um, I'm on my second glass already, so by the time I'm in this, I shouldn't be that tipsy. But we'll see. I've been doing a lot of landscaping today. Um, I'm still in my landscaping clothes. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm in my landscaping clothes. I let my hair down. Fuck it. You know, come out and give you some Burke's thoughts. And, and here we go. All right. So from there. So from there, we go and we, in, we, uh, we go to this other venue that's like, so they have the main stage is like a T-Mobile stage. And then there's this stage over to the west of the T-Mobile stage. If you guys are from, you know, from Chicago, if you're facing south, it's on the west side. If you went to Lollapalooza, you can understand it. But say you're at the T-Mobile stage, it's over here. So we go over there and that's when we started to see like just people just already fucked up. Like already where it's like, bro, you need to take your ass home. like. You, you start to see the insanity of Lollapalooza when it comes to, like, I think it was, like, kids are over there. Ha like, kids were fighting or they were they were talking to the cops over there. Or like, they're getting arrested. Something like that was going on over there already. I'm like, man, it's only day one. This is the start of day one of that. Like, what's going on with this, man? So that's getting started. We get another drink. We're sitting there watching that performance. And... You know, we're starting to see, you know, we're starting to see so many different outfits. It's starting to get crowded and everything in there that, you know, uh, my buddy was like, look, hey, we can get Tito's backstage. So we went to go, went over there, worked our way over there. So it was pretty dope what the uh, what Tito's had set up. They had two different venues. So they had like a little like drink garden that all you had to do is be 21 or older to go into. And they had like this Tito like, um, Will of Fortune. They were playing like a Tito's Will of Fortune game in there. That was pretty dope. You can win Tito's merchandise. You can win like wristbands to get into the VIP area. And um, you could, you know, win Tito's shirts and everything like that. But it was pretty dope. It was off to like the cut, like in shaded area. And Lollapalooza was hot as fuck. Uh, I decided to wear all, I decided to wear black pants and a long sleeve Nirvana shirt. And trust me, it was a bad decision, but I, I had to keep trying to pull it off. I had to pull it off, all right? So, you know, we go over there, we get our Tito's passes, and uh, we make our way back to, you know, back to where the private menu was for for TLA. So we go there, you know, we introduce everyone. It was great seeing everyone coming back in there. Uh, at this point, honestly, I was, I was already tip-tip. Like, I was already like, look, man, I'm... I'm on, you know, I'm feeling good. Give me two more drinks and I'm I'm up here, you know. Uh, but went back there, got to see those guys. It was great seeing them. Um, that, now, that's one thing when I say, like, when you're my age, I'm 36. When you're my age, you should always have, you should spend the extra money to get a VIP pass. Um, I didn't spend the money for a VIP pass. I was thankful enough for friends to hook me up. But if I did not, uh, if I did not have those friends, I would honestly go and get a buy a VIP pass myself, or I would go. I would not go, because you know when you get my age, you want to yeah you want to go see the performance and everything, but you also want to sit your ass down and be around areas where you're not rubbing elbows with everyone. You're not seeing all this 
that and then she wants to see people in normal clothes and you know you know have a drink and be able to chill and relax and talk while also still listening to music so if you go to Lollapalooza next year and you're my age or older or you know you just need some place a place to be able to chill definitely get you a VIP pass all right uh, so we go back and we get some we get some uh, number three we had uno dos tres and we get to number three of it in yeho uh, of that brand now that was one of the bottles that I had brought onto the private menu myself just because I love that bottle it's 56 bucks uh, for the Inyeho and it's and it's hey it's a solid choice so I bring it out and I pour up my buddy one as well and uh, well I pour up myself Brad and my other buddy you know as well uh, who got you know who was able to you know get us get this all going and uh, within like literally within like 20 minutes of us being there like everyone was flocking to this bottle and the whole bottle was gone within an hour of being there and then we put out the santo reposado and yeah we you know we got that we had that we was at the point where we had that on the table and everyone was just coming up and pouring from it but um so we go back there we kick it we say our highs and everything we chill with them for a little bit uh, we hear some dope music, uh, and then we go over to Tito's Lounge. So we get over to Tito's Lounge, and they're fucking giving out free massages over there. They're giving out free massages. They have a fucking convenience store over there. Uh, one of their uh, one of the people one of the people over there starts opening up like fifteen different like Jelly Belly uh, gummy bears, and they put Tito's vodka in there. So started eating uh, Tito's gummy bear. Uh, gummy bear soaked vodka gummy bears if that makes sense yeah yeah you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying you're here with me uh, but that was pretty dope uh, got to see a couple performances from that Tito's lounge which honestly if it was one lounge that I would pay for I think that was pretty dope lounge because you got to see the Bud Light stage uh, and then there was another bigger stage it was over to its right and then you got freaking free Tito's. You know, I don't really drink uh, drink vodka like that. I drink a hell of a lot of tequila. I don't really drink vodka like that. But they had uh, like five, six different vodka drinks you could take advantage of for free. They had a free masseuse there. Oh, and I had my hair out like this. And they said that they were, uh, one of the employees who was, uh, one of the employees was like, oh, you can go get your hair braided over there. Like, well, you know, my wife may get mad at me if I let someone else braid my hair, but you know, we'll see. So, I'm gonna skip past a little bit of this because I gotta get to, you know, I gotta get to some fun parts of this, uh, some more exciting parts of this. So, you know, we leave Tito's Lounge and we we go back to the backstage where we were at. Um, so we're listening to uh, shit. For the life of me, I cannot remember the name of the band that we were listening to, but there was it was a, a punk rock band that we started listening to, and um, so we're out there. And if you've ever been to a punk rock show, especially like a, a real hardcore punk rock show, you know that a mosh pit is going to get started. You know this, right? And you know crowd surfing is going to happen. All right? So the mosh pit gets going here, and it's going crazy. And we're seeing, you know, everyone crowd surfing. Uh, this is Brad's first time really seeing a, a show like this, um, especially Lollapalooza. And, you know, me, I've been to several. So, but it's always fun seeing this. It's always fun to experience it and see it in live person. Uh, and, you know, and to feel the energy of it all it's just a different type of energy that you have not experienced if you've never been there so seeing that and we're seeing you know we're starting to see people you know maybe one or two people fly over to fly over the uh, crowd surfing right so we start to see this one like this one guy in particular we're seeing other people like maybe two three times like going over and, and coming back okay cool 
you having fun. This guy, we see him three times. Like he comes back around, we're like, is this, like, is this happening? Like, are we just drunk or high or whatever? Like, or is this like really happening? Is this guy just steadily coming back? So we see him a fourth time. Fourth time, we're like, no, this dude is purposely getting up here, crowd surfing, coming over. So a fifth time comes around. So he comes back around and I'm like, fuck it. I'm about to talk to him. So I stop him like, bro, like, is it me or is this like your fifth fucking time crowd surfing? <laughs> and this dude is, this dude is gone. Uh, younger kid, long hair, uh, just free spirit. Cool as hell though, man. This dude, you know, just like, yeah, man, this is dope as hell. He's like, you know, you want to see me do it again? I'm like, well, fuck it. Why not? Go up there six times. So it goes up there six times. This dude is just come up here like it's like a freaking roller coaster for him you know so we start to make friends with this guy and everything and uh if you saw the preview on on instagram you would you would know what this is maybe know what this is leading up to so we make friends with him he does it a sixth time and well no he does it a seventh time and you know we're going over there we're giving him we come out i go out i go back i get him a drink give him a drink and uh, you know we're we're talking it up, we're chat, chatting it up, and everything, and uh, we're rolling this guy on. We're trying to see how many times he can go on this crowd serve before they stop him or before the end of the concert. So I think he's on like his ninth one, and Brad decided to walk up closer to get more film, like to get more footage of the mosh pit, right? So this guy crowd serves, he comes back around, you know, I give him handshake and everything i'm like yeah dude you know and, and brad is starting to film this mosh pit because he's you know he's like it's pretty dope and uh so this guy goes over he, he hugs his girl and everything him and i make contact and he looks he's like you know he's looking for brad i'm like he's right there and this guy looks at me he's like he's like should i should i he's like i'm like yeah he's like he's like should i push him should i push him I'm like Hell the fuck yeah. <laughs> so this guy, so he's getting closer. I got this on film, by the way. If you want to see the footage of this, I will post it to uh, to Instagram. Um, so this guy's getting closer to Brad, and Brad has his phone like this filming a mosh pit. And all of a sudden, you see him, boom, push Brad. And Brad just goes right into the middle of the, pot, of the mosh pit. He's getting pushed around and everything. He still has his camera on and everything. And, and like he's just going around, but Brad's a big guy as well. So he gives back out the mosh pit and he's looking at us, and, you know, me and his guys and they're just cracking our asses up and, and fucking Brad because that you know, was his first mosh pit ever, you know? So that was pretty dope for him to experience that. But we, after that, after that set, we go backstage and then here's the checkup on the white shoes, right? So we look down he looks down at his white shoes. He's like, hey, hey, T. He's like, they're fucking ruined now. So we look at, we have the white shoe update and they're fucking all muddy and everything now. We're all fucked up. We're high and it's a good fucking time, but it's only like four or five o'clock at night, man. And I'm like, at this point, I'm toasted. Like I'm fried, I'm done. Like I could call it a night right then. But I'm just like, you know what? I can't let the first night of Lollapalooza defeat me. So I had to keep drinking. So we keep drinking. We start walking around and everything. We see some performances. Uh, we make it to where we see Metallica. And Metallica comes on. And us pushing our way up to Metallica was just an experience in itself. I mean, we're walking downhill. We're walking uphill. And we're going through all these different places. You got people literally passed out on the fucking, like in the middle of the park. This is in, in Grant Park in uh, Chicago. So they're passed out. Like they're they're so drunk and high. That they're just literally just in the middle with like 100,000 people around. Just sleep. Just no care to the world. Knocked out to this world. Right? So... I had to take a drink of my tequila. Um, 
So they're just knocked out to the world and everything. So we're walking past them and it's just like, bro, we got, we got pretty close. We you think we got a little bit, we had a little bit closer than, we got a little bit closer than I thought we would, but we weren't uh, quite by the stage. And, uh, you know, obviously we're there with Jason as well. And Jason, I asked Jason where he's at, and he sends me a fucking picture. This guy is literally right there. In the, so, uh, so, so Metallica had a had a air, had an area where the the uh, it was enclosed within the stage, right? Had an area that was enclosed within the stage. So I text Jason, I'm like Jason, where you at, bro? Because uh, if he was out in the crowd, we were gonna come and stand with him. Well, this guy is literally right there to where he can reach out and touch the lead singer and lead guitarist from Metallica. They call it the snake pit. He sends me this picture and this guy is literally from the distance from like me to like almost you at this camera, uh, if you can really tell that. But he could literally reach out like this and touch this guy. And so, you know, and am I, bro, like, really, I can't get there. So we chill back. And uh, we watch a little bit of Metallica. We hear, um, I, I believe we heard Sandman. And then we bounce because Little Baby was playing. So we go for Little Baby. He was on the Bud Light stage. So he's over there. We're going back to the Tito's Lounge, right? And I'm skipping over hours because I'll be honest with you, I've I kind of kind of lost track of <laughs> of of some of this stuff because it was a very long day, but let's say about, it's probably about 8.45, nine o'clock at this point. So I'm making it, I'm making it all the way through, right? So we go back to Tito's Lounge to watch Little Baby perform. But we get there and there's these, this, groups of, this group of like moms that are over there and they have this freaking spicy ice cream. And they're sitting there trying to get Brad and I eat some of the spicy ice cream, so I dare him to fucking try some, you know? So he tries some, and, you know, he's sitting there eating spicy, he's drunk and eating spicy fucking ice cream with these random people just out of nowhere as we watch a little baby. And then, now, one of the one of the best things that I, I love about live concerts is seeing, like, those random people that just pop up out of nowhere, and then they disappear. So this one happened to us on Thursday. So we're just standing there, Brad's eating his little spicy ice cream with these ladies. I'm just chilling, just babysitting, just my last drink of the night. It was like a freaking vodka and lemonade or some shit. I'm sitting there just babysitting this shit. And all of a sudden, here comes this Indian chick or Native American, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Here comes this chick that goes right up on the side of Brad and just starts talking to us. And we're just like, oh, I don't know where my friends are. You know, I'm just gonna stand here with you guys and watch music. And Brad's like asking her about little Baby and everything. And if she li even likes the music, she's like, no, I don't like the music at all. She's like, but you know, it seems like a cool vibe because Brad and I, you know, he knows little Baby and I love little Baby music. So we're sitting there, you know, sitting there rocking out to it. And uh, she starts dancing and everything with Brad and uh, just dancing, you know, not like dancing, dancing, but you know, just sitting there dancing in the vicinity. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, I gotta go all the way back over to the stage and go be my friends. So, you know, I say goodbye and Brad says bye and everything. And she walks out of there, walks and like walks past where we were standing at and everything walks to where she disappeared, just fades away in the crowd. So that's, this is one of my, you know, this is one of my things, random people coming up to you and then they just fade away, they just go, right? So she fades away. Brian and I are sitting there enjoying a little bit more, a little baby. All of a sudden, she comes back around and this chick just pops right back up. Like, just right there. Like, I'm sitting there looking at Brad, I'm drunk as fuck. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this? Like, is this a ghost or some shit? You know? So 
she so, she'll she'll she just pops back up, scares the shit out of us, and then she stays there for the rest of the performance, and then just fades back into the crowd again. You know. So at this point, we're drunk, we're high. I'm done. I'm just completely burnt out. It's ten o'clock. We go catch our train, right? So we go to catch our train, and well, we get some pizza first. We go to catch our train. I'm sitting down, and Brad went walked off somewhere. But I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I see one of my boys come in, and this guy is just going out of his mind, right? So I'm sitting there. I'm, I yell this like he's like, he's like maybe 20 feet away from me. You know, I yell his name. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say his name on here. I yell his name. No clue I said a word. He's no clue anyone says it. So I pretty much, he's like here to like maybe three steps away from me. So I yell his name at the top of his lungs. I look at this dude, nothing. He, he's not there. He's not there at all. I just said, come sit your ass down. <laughs> so he sits down. He like immediately like almost goes to sleep. Like he's in zombie mode from the first day of Lollapalooza. You know, so we get on our we get on the train. We uh I pass out. He passes out. Brad stays awake. We get up. I had to freaking push him. I had to preach my, push my boy that lives close to me. I had to push him to wake him up so we can get off on our stop. We get in, you know, we get off, get into the car, and my wife was just like how was Lollapalooza? And I'm just like, uh. And she's like, y'all are, she's like, y'all smell like nothing but alcohol. And y'all are just, y'all just look fried. And I'm just like, yeah, that's Lollapalooza for you, man. So that's in the first day of Lollapalooza. Day one, I'm almost just done for, for the rest of the weekend. If it was any other weekend, I would have been done. Like, I'd be like, okay, this is my one day of partying. I'm done. I'm staying in the next, you know, the next three, four days, next week. But I still have three more days of Lollapalooza to go. So, man, yeah. Day one almost did me in. You know, Brad had, you know, had his first experience with the mosh pit. You know, that was pretty damn fun. Um, you know, being able to see the guys that I haven't seen in a year, going there and just like just getting reacclimated to Lollapalooza and just partying on that scale. I mean, literally 12 hours of drinking. It's a lot of fucking drinking, long time. So, you know, hey, if you're gonna go, all I'm gonna say is be prepared. Uh, this was just my day one, and there's three more days to go. So I'm going to tell you guys more about the other three days, you know, here coming soon. Uh, I'm going to tell you more about, so, but the other three days are going to be more about the performances. It's going to be more about the performances, more about different stages, uh, more about just, you know, cool eyes experiences, meeting cool people, um, as opposed to any kind of true craziness besides for it being my wife's first Lollapalooza and she went all three days. So that's going to be a story in itself. But until then, I'm going to finish the rest of my Joel Richard tequila. Here it is again. You guys can find this. I'm going to try to finish my Goose Island Tall Boy as well, my IPA. Uh, but until then, yeah, man, it was fun being back here. My first burst thoughts back in a while. Uh, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do Lollapalooza for, it's going to be four episodes. I'm going to try to do that over the next, you know, finish it up over the next three weeks. Obviously, this is one week, but three following weeks from here. If I can remember it, then I will. Uh, I may end up trying to do it just the next four days just to see. We'll see. Uh, but Lollapalooza just completely wore me out. Almost done on day one. Brad got in the mosh pit. Got to uh, Uno Dos Tres, Tres emptied after day one. Uh, Santo Reposado emptied after day one. And uh, it's a lot more to come, guys. So happy to be back. 
Thank you for listening and joining me here. Enjoy me with this drink, my little story here. And uh, just, just happy to be back with you guys. Cheers.